Okay, so a very good evening to you all. Uh, today we'll be starting the meiosis. Yesterday for class 10th I have uploaded the video of mitosis. Uh, but today we will start and we'll have a brief discussion on meiosis only. Uh, since meiosis is uh, not a big deal till class 10th stand students. So <clears throat> we need to understand first what is mitosis and what is meiosis. Mitosis is known as additional division. Why? Because in mitosis the number of cells doubles itself. But in meiosis, the number of cells becomes half. It will become half. For example, when we are talking about chromosome, in mitosis, 23 plus 23, 46 chromosomes, 23 pairs of chromosome remains intact. But when we are talking about meiosis, the 46 chromosomes will become half and it will become 23. So mathematically, 46 chromosomes, half of 46 is 23. So in meiosis, meiosis is called as reductional division. Mitosis, additional division, meiosis is called as the reductional division. Now, so what is uh, the reductional division and why it is needed? And if at all it is reductional division, then why it is in our body? We need to understand this. Because the sex cells like sperm and the ovum, they cannot follow mitosis. Why? Let's say, the. let us assume one simple gesture that uh, uh, mitosis is uh, occurring in the sex cell. Then what will happen? The sperm which is showing 46 chromosome, which is showing 23 chromosome will become 46. The ovum which is showing 23 chromosome, it will also become 46. Now during fertilization of sperm and ovum, 46 plus 46 total, 92 chromosome. So the human being will become superhuman being. The brain will develop, the body will become very small, the hands and the legs will become very much thin, but the brain will be like computerized. But the human being will be reproductively infertile due to severe amount of chromosomes in the body. That is the reason why in the sex cell meiosis is required. So this was just an assumption but there is no such cases of 92 chromosomes still now in this planet. In meiosis what happens? The sperms and the ovum both, both the sperms as well as the ovum will go for meiotic division. Here, in the meiotic division, what will take place? The sperm and ovum number, chromosomes number will become half. For example, we are talking about sperm. 46 chromosomes present in the sperm and ovum after fertilizing. I am talking about after fertilization. Post fertilization event, there when the sperm and ovum is no more sperm and ovum now. Now, it has become a zygote or embryo. Okay, that time there will be 46 chromosome, but sperm and ovum irrespectively will hold only 23 chromosomes each. At the time of fertilization only, they will have 46 chromosomes intact. Here, meiosis is really very important because it is making the number of chromosomes halved. Once the 46 chromosome will become 23, once the 46 chromosome will become 23, then surely when the sperm will fertilize the ovum or ovum will be fertilized by the sperm, then there will be 46 chromosomes number intact. That is, the human being will be a normal human being. There will be no such chromosomal disorder in the human being. But during that time, if something goes in the either way, that is, the chromosomal division or the division of uh, sex cells is not done in a proper manner, then surely there is a trouble. Surely there is a trouble. There will be chromosomal disorder in the particular child. Now, there are two things, two technical parts, haploid and diploid. When we are talk, talking about haploid, haploid means 23 chromosome. That is, n is equal to 23. n means number, any number. So, number of chromosomes, n is equal to 23. When we are talking about diploid, so n plus n is equal to 23 plus 23, that is 46 chromosome. So this 46 chromosome concept is the concept of mitosis. How? Because mitosis is an additional division, the number of chromosome increases here. But in meiosis, it's a reductional division, the number of chromosome reduced by half. So n is equal to 23 is the concept of meiosis. No mitosis is involved here. Now, let us talk about the significance of meiosis. What exactly happened in meiosis? Why meiosis is so crucial for us? First of all, it develops the sex cell. Sperm and the ovum both are processed under meiosis. After fertilization, it is uh, retaining the 46 chromosome, but before fertilization, only 23 chromosome in sperm and 23 chromosome in ovum. 
secondly it is having a very major role that it is sharing the maternal and the paternal chromosome maternal chromosome from the father side paternal chromosome from maternal chromosome from the mother side paternal chromosome from the father side maternal and paternal maternal from mother side paternal from father side so what happens here when the set of chromosome the set of identical chromosomes that is known as the homologous chromosome comes closer to each other during meiosis means one particular set of chromosome will be from the mother side and one particular set of chromosome will be from the father side then it will form bivalent or tetrad as shown in your book in the page number 10 so this is what the bivalent or tetrad arrangement i hope it's clear to you clearly visible to you i will lift up the book a little bit more see bivalent or tetrad arrangement now just look at my fingers how i'm explaining the things just look at my fingers over here so let's say my left finger index finger maternal chromosome right is the paternal chromosome now when the both now they are having the similar size except my ring in the finger they are having the similar size so when they are coming closer to each other they will form a bivalent or tetrad like this this x can you see one x has formed this formation of x is known as chiasmata c h i a s m a t a some pronunciate it as chiasmata some pronounce it pronunciate it as chiasmata both are correct no problem about it so chiasmata or chiasmata so this is what known as the bivalent chiasmata or tetrad also we can say either bivalent you say or tetrad that is the literal term chiasmata is the biological term so why they are having this uh, chiasmata formation the chiasmata formation is basically done so that the maternal chromosome and the paternal chromosome must share properly in the child that's the reason why a child is neither an identical copy of the mother nor an identical copy of the father maybe the child is looking like mother but the habit is like father maybe the child is looking like father but the habit is like mother who knows it is just a matter of chance that during sharing what kind of things are shared between the maternal and the paternal chromosome that attitude the child will develop within herself or himself because when the both chromosomes comes together the homologous pair of chromosome means if the maternal chromosome shares the same size with the paternal chromosome then only they can form the chiasmata formation if the maternal chromosome is quite less in size then the paternal chromosome or the paternal chromosome is quite less in size than the maternal chromosome then there will be never forming a chance of chiasmata chiasmata will never form only in the homologous chromosomes of maternal side and the paternal side homologous chromosome means the chromosome which is having same shape and size if the chromosome is not having same shape or size then it will never form chiasmata in the meiosis so maternal chromosome must share the same size of the paternal chromosome then automatically the chiasmata formation like x like formation will take place there the sharing of the maternal character and the paternal character will be taking place and the child will develop both the characters of mother as well as the father so this is the main point regarding meiosis neither the child is completely like mother nor the child is completely like father that is the reason why the child showing mixed character of father and the mother looks are different habits are different but at the same time resembling both mother and the father this is what the meiosis has to say about itself please go through the text properly try to understand the video as i have said please go through the diagram the diagram which is given in page number 10 figure 1.10 please go through it significance of meiosis three points are there go through those three points till then the next video will be uploaded by tomorrow itself please go through this video and try to understand the things as i have said thank you